Hi, this is Rob Graham, Director of Training at Learning Craft. And this time around, I want to show you some cool special effects we can do using masking. Now, in this case, we're going to create an X-ray vision effect. And let me show you what the final project is going to look like. Go over here, and if I run this, what we have is a barn. And if I pass my cursor over the barn, it allows me to go and take a peek and see what's in there. Look, we have some hay, and there's a lovely lit jack-o'-lantern. That's, uh, that's something the fire marshal's always happy to see. And down here we have, look, there's a litter of, uh, of piglets. And uh, we have a tractor in here, and oh, there's a cat. And over here we have a horse eating some hay. So there's all sorts of things happening on in the barn. Of course, we wouldn't be able to know about this if we didn't have this very special superpower that we've just adopted as our X-ray vision. Now, if you want to join in at home, you can go to our website at www.learningcraft.com forward slash flash kits forward slash, and in this case, you want to look for a project called X-ray vision Dot zip, and that'll provide you with all the assets that you need to follow along. In this case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be starting with some elements. If I look down here in the kit, I have, first of all, I have two different versions of the barn that we're working with. I have the barn inside as well as the barn outside. I also have something called Binox, and Binox is really just a shape that I've created to make it look like binoculars. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically sew these guys together so that we can create a very interesting special effect. Well, how do we do this? Well, to begin with, there, this project in our timeline is going to require that we have three different layers. The first layer, which I'm going to name here, I'm just going to call this the barn outside. Okay, And what we need to do in this case, I'm going to go and press F7 to put in a blank keyframe so that I can take this object and place it somewhere on my stage. I'm just going to kind of put it in a general position up here for right now. And there it is. And on the layer in the middle, I want this to be the information that shows the barn inside. And so now I take the barn inside graphic once again. If it's not already there for you, you need to put in a blank keyframe. And I'm going to take barn inside and place it in here as well. Now, obviously, we've just taken one of these graphics and dropped it on top of the other one, so we can't see it all that well. One of the problems that we may face, and I'm going to come out of here a little bit so you can see more of what's happening on the whole stage, is if I wanted to create an effect that allowed me, in essence, to see from one picture to another, I'm going to have to make sure that those pictures are lined up pretty well. Well, the situation we're dealing with right now is if I were to click on the barn inside and look down here in my properties window, I can get some information about its position in relationship to the stage. And what this is telling me right here is that it, the x-axis is almost set to zero, but the y-axis is way off. And actually, I can look here and see that I have a whole bunch of white. Well, that's not going to work for me because, in essence, both of these graphics need to be perfectly aligned in order for the effect to work. So I'm just going to take advantage of the fact that I can go in here, and I'm going to set both of these to 0, 0.0. So let's go down here, and instead of negative 54, I think 0 will be a better choice. And so now I've taken this object, and I've moved it into position. Now, I may need to do the same thing with the graphic for barn outside, and in fact, I really do. However, it's this one is in the way, the barn inside layer. So I'm going to go up here to my timeline, and I'm going to turn it off turn off the visibility just by clicking on it there underneath that eye icon. And once again, I can do the same thing here. I can go and click on the object now that I can see it. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to make sure that the settings for both the X and the Y coordinate are set to 0, 0.0. Okay. And now if we go and turn on the barn inside, we'll see everything should line up exactly the way we want it to so that we can make the effect work out. Now, in this event, we're going to be creating something that's going to allow us, in essence, to take a mask, a hole, and look through it as we go along. However, we need to create a slightly different function because not only are we creating a mask, but we need to be able to control the position of that mask on the stage, in essence, by following our cursor around. So to begin with, I'm going to go up here and let me just, uh, I'll name this layer mask because that's what it's going to be. And let me put in a blank keyframe by pressing F7. And into that frame, I'm just going to go and grab this piece of artwork called Binox. And I'm going to drag it out here to the right side of the stage for the moment. Now, what's really going to happen here is we need to write a script that's going to tell the computer what to do when this program starts up. So I'm going to create a fourth layer here. And then I'll appear on top. And I'm just going to name this one Actions. Okay. And what the Actions layer is going to allow me to do is to put in a little bit of action script that will be read as soon as the program starts, right here in frame one. So I'm going to select this, this keyframe here in Actions, and I'm going to go and I'm going to click to open up 
the actions window. Now what the actions window is going to show me here is that I'm trying to attach the actions to a frame, which is perfect. That's exactly what I want to do. And the script that we're going to use is fairly straightforward. We want to create, first of all, an event called start drag. So we type it in. By the way, it's important to a certain degree that the nomenclature that you use when you're writing these scripts is accurate. And in this case, start drag is lowercase s for start and then uppercase d for drag, all as one word. And we're saying in essence start drag. I want you to take this object and I want you to drag it around in the event that this program starts. And now we need to put in a little bit of information as to what it is. And the first thing we need to do is identify what it is that we want to drag around. Well, I want to drag in something called Binox. And Binox is the object that we have over here. However, we're going to need to declare it in some other way so that the program understands specifically what object we're referring to. And in this case, Binox, we're going to say, I want you to lock it to the center of the cursor. So basically, we're going to set that to true. And then we're going to go close parentheses. And then we're going to put it in a semicolon. OK, so it's that simple. Now, one thing we do have to do before this will work is we have to go and identify Binox. And let me explain this. I'm going to click here to close that. We have an object sitting here that I've pulled out of the library. And this object is a graphic. Now in here I've named it Binox, but over here, as an instance, it really has no name. All it's telling me is that it's a graphic. I need to be able to name this particular object right here, the one that's sitting on the stage, in order to, in essence, tell it what to do. In order to name it, it cannot be a graphic. I can't name a graphic. A graphic is just an object. However, down here in my properties window, if I go in and I convert it to a movie clip, which is as simple as going in and saying, hey, guess what, now you're a movie clip. Now I can go in and name the instance of this guy. So if I go in here and say I want you to be called Binox, then now when the program runs, it's going to say Binox, huh? Hey, this guy is called Binox. That's the one you want me to move around? And things will work the way we want it to. By the way, the object here, even though I've named it Binox over here, is not the same as this. This is the master. We can name this anything. We can um, name it binoculars. We can name it masking graphic. We can do whatever we want. We can also do the same thing here. I'm naming it binox just because it's easy enough to remember, but I could name this mask holes or something. What would be important here is the name of this object as an instance has to directly match the name of the object that we've used in our script. Okay. Now this is also true if if you were changing cases, a lot of the time the names that you use are case sensitive. So if you use a capital in one instance and you don't use a capital in the other instance of the naming, then they may not mesh and you're going to run into a problem. Okay? Now, one last thing that needs to be done is that we need to declare this object as a mask, which means I need to go over here to this layer here. And if I right click on it, I can go in and say, make that into a mask. Okay, so we should be good to go. Program's ready. We have our script in place, which is going to move the mask to where the cursor position is. And let's see what happens. I'm going to hit Control Enter to start things up, and I move over it. Now, you may say, well, nothing's really happening right now, is it? Because the cursor's up here. But keep in mind that the graphics that we so carefully stacked on top of one another have the clouds in the exact same position. So as we look through one layer, we're actually seeing the other layer beneath it. And the real proof that this is working is when we get down here into the barn area. And look at that. Now we can see through the layer, which is showing up, which is the primary layer, the outside of the barn. And through it, we can see the inside of the barn. Okay, so as simple as that, and now as we move over, we can see all sorts of things that are going on inside this building. Also, if you're new to masking, you might want to check out the Masking Basics video that is also available somewhere on YouTube that also covers how masks work initially so that you can uh, get a good foundation. Have fun with the project, and as always, if we can help you out in any way at LearningCraft, let us know. We provide online applications training for media development as well as on-site training for media development as well as interactive online marketing approaches. This is Rob Graham. Have fun with the project, and I'll see you next time.